plants and architecture cluster brings together plants, materials and architectural scientists who are trying to develop solutions for a more sustainable future um, and way of living. So we're exchanging ideas and three of those areas that we're particularly looking at include vertical farming, we're also looking at green infrastructure and then finally we're also looking at materials. Here at Bristrith we are using uh, the environment of a green roof, which is a very hostile environment, to look at the drought resistance in turf, turf species. So we've got grass and clover growing and um, we've withheld water from them and to see, to see how resilient they are to those environments. Um, as we have more extreme weather, more extreme droughts, uh, we, need, we need plants that can respond to that. What we're doing here, using this green roof environment, this particularly hostile environment, will produce information that allows us to think about how we future-proof those environments. We're cooperating uh, with Aberystwyth University and Bangor University uh, on looking at uh, the relationship between plants and architecture. Uh, at the Welsh School of Architecture we've been interested in how we can integrate plants into the built environment. On the material side we're looking at uh, biomaterials uh, for insulation and, uh, and general construction. Uh, we're looking at green roofs and we also have a project uh, uh, looking at uh, vertical farms. This clover is uh, grown in Aberystwyth University and brought here and we put it on the green roof test cell to see compare with sedum, the common uh, existing green roof plants, how different are they in terms of uh, heat fluxes for building insulation, passive cooling, in vapor transpiration. Different plants, different substrates put on our test cell to see the different thermal performance, heating, insulation, cooling performance. Uh, to, uh, save, to save building energy consumptions. Also looking to water retention capacities can be easily measured through uh, moisture water content. Also looking to water purifications. So the idea is to take this prototype of vertical farm and place it in a real location. So what you can see here is the Welsh School of Architecture where we have identified a location nearby. This is a Butte Park next door, and it's right in the middle of a Cardiff city centre. The prototype is attached to PV panels, which will run the system um, self-sufficiently. With this information, we can help vertical farms to become more efficient, not just in terms of production, but in terms of helping us to use the space more efficiently in cities, uh, create our own food production, and use renewable energy. So this will make them truly sustainable and truly efficient. What we're seeing here is a range of, uh, in effect, it's a sort of robotized greenhouse. And that's actually very similar to the technology that's certainly been developed for some of the vertical farming systems. So our involvement is to look at different ways of growing crops in a more controlled environment. So we're using new technology that allow us to grow crops in, in a very different way. It allows us to grow crops in environments where we ordinarily wouldn't. It allows us to, to control that environment better so that we can also not just grow conventional crops, we can actually grow novel crops. So crops that, that need uh, different day lengths or, or perhaps different uh, intensities of light and that would ordinarily not grow in the UK. Because we're controlling a lot more of the environment, we can actually grow those crops in the UK now. We've had several varieties of miscanthus uh, sent from Aberystwyth and the research we're doing here is, is taking these stems and producing different types of materials and different types of fibres from these so we can produce both very fine fibres that can be used for composite applications or some larger samples which then can be used for, for bigger building applications. Here we're seeing um, a large miscanthus stem but then when we go down to even smaller scale, we can extract these thin cylindrical but tapered fibres. These are the items that we're looking for to extract to help with reinforcing materials. This is helping us um, understand the material better so that we can utilise its properties on a large scale as a, as a building component um, by understanding the material we can understand the product. 
So ultimately, it's going to lead to using Miscanthus more in the, in the built environment, so using it to produce not just composites for, for furniture applications, but also actual structural parts of, of the building. Is where understanding the Miscanthus, that ranges right from whether we can refine the Miscanthus to make the fibre, right through to how it reacts to moisture, how strong it is in its natural form. We'll then move on to producing composites and producing uh, larger structural, structural elements from this Miscanthus. And, and then seeing how that, that will react in a, in, a, in a built environment. What we're trying to do is extend the life of Miscanthus and create actual products which, which will last 10, 20 years before it's then disposed of, probably through burning and through energy recovery. By bringing together plant scientists with material scientists and architects, that is making us think about what we're doing individually in our own disciplines and actually create more holistic solutions that, that can be used.